My wife just left me. She says life revolves around football, and she's sick of it. I'm quite upset. We were together for seven seasons. Today, I'm going to recap a 2022 action thriller film called Blackout. The film commences with the main character, John Kane, fleeing with a briefcase full of sensitive data concerning influential individuals implicated in international crimes. Amidst this, he finds himself pursued by a squad of hired goons. In his endeavor to protect the documents, Kane is involved in a catastrophic car accident. He regains consciousness in a nearby Mexican hospital, devoid of any recollection about his past or how he wound up there. As he grapples with his identity crisis, he encounters Anna, a woman purporting to be his spouse. Meanwhile, Ethan McCoy, a DEA agent, surveys a burned-out property alleged to be Kane's. Furious, Ethan, who's been working undercover for five years, instructs his team to locate Kane immediately. Back at the hospital, it becomes evident that Kane's brain has suffered neuropathic damage, leading to memory loss, making reality comprehension extremely challenging. He fails to remember even fundamental details about his life, like his parents or his name. Simultaneously, Eddie, a notorious cartel boss, shows up, presenting himself as Kane's friend. He conceals his true identity and promises to help restore Kane's memory, yet his sincerity leaves Kane skeptical. Indeed, it is soon revealed that Eddie's real motive for being at the hospital is to extract the briefcase's location from Kane. He threatens the doctor with harm to his family if he fails to bring back Kane's memory promptly. Meanwhile, Anna, who claims to be Kane's wife, aids him with basic tasks, attempting to jog his memory by recounting shared experiences. She is curious about his predicament and his sudden hospitalization, yet Kane's amnesia offers no answers. In time, a nurse comes in to assist him with personal care. Upon the doctor's return to inject him with an unidentified substance, Kane's military training instinctively kicks in, causing adrenaline to surge, triggering survival instincts. The clock is ticking, and the cartel is on Kane's tail, seeking the crucial information he possesses. Struggling against the hospital staff, Kane escapes his bed. He and Anna prepare to depart the hospital. He confronts her, demanding the truth, expressing his mistrust towards her. As they enter an elevator, a man joins them and makes a phone call, stating he has located the targets. In response, Kane takes him down. On the lower floor, he continues to combat Eddie's underlings. Around this time, he begins to experience sporadic memory flashbacks. Eddie manages to halt the elevator, forcing them to find another exit. Kane seizes a henchman's phone to contact Eddie, querying his intentions. Eddie demands the suitcase, imploring Kane not to complicate the situation further. Subsequently, Eddie attempts to locate Kane using the security camera footage. Kane insists, coercing Anna to unveil the truth. She confesses that he was once a member of the cartel and had worked in tandem with Eddie. Despite this revelation, he struggles to reconcile this reality with his authentic self. Slowly, Kane starts remembering fragments of his past, although Anna's face remains elusive to him. Eddie's goons once again pick up on Kane's trail, but he manages to deal with them adeptly. In his room, John uncovers documents and a contact number. He gathers essential tools, including a knife and a flashlight, but an unidentified man ambushes him from behind, injecting him with a substance. Regardless, Kane swiftly recovers, retaliating against the intruder. After overcoming him, he faces additional henchmen who he also manages to defeat, despite his weakened state. Venturing into the corridor, he encounters a concerned nurse and instructs her to attend to the subdued man in the adjacent room. Shortly after, another one of Eddie's cronies attempts to restrain Kane, but he prevails, escaping into the hospital's laboratory. The henchman gives chase, brandishing a firearm. Engaging in close combat, Kane eventually overpowers him, managing to incapacitate him with a broken plate. He finds a satellite phone in the man's pocket, attempts to flee but is met by the chief doctor. Promising assistance, the doctor tries to reassure the apprehensive Kane. He expresses his frustration towards the criminals and pledges allegiance to Kane's cause. Trusting Kane, he reveals that Eddie is in collusion with General Montejo, 
the head of the Mexican army, the key figures related to the case documented in Kane's briefcase. With events gradually tying together and starting to make sense, Kane keeps envisioning a woman on a beach, basking in the glow of the setting sun. Upon discovering the defeated henchman, Eddie, and his crew order the hospital's exit sealed. Wandering down the hallway, Kane stumbles into a room, where he uses the satellite phone to dial the number found in his personal documents. Upon hearing his voice, a surprised McCoy acknowledges that he has been in search of Kane for the past few days. McCoy attempts to trace the call, but Kane, cautious of placing his trust in anyone, keeps the conversation brief. Surveying his surroundings, the hospital appears vaguely familiar. He examines the room, discovering a concealed wall. Upon removal of a section, he uncovers a secret chamber bathed in crimson light. It's a drug den, with scantily clad women packaging narcotics amidst scattered weapons, ammunition, and caged exotic animals. Ascending a staircase wired to an elevator, Kane reunites with Anna. Kane reveals his discovery to Anna, who reacts nonchalantly, implying that even hospitals have dues to pay. He presses her for the whole truth concerning the ongoing situation. Anna confesses that his actions have provoked numerous people who wish to see him dead. She also discloses that they had a past together. She mentions that Kane and Eddie were partners, contracted to deliver a briefcase to a high-ranking general. However, Kane vanished unexpectedly with the briefcase. Once again, Eddie's men attack, triggering a violent confrontation. The duo ascends to the next floor to evade the pursuers, managing to find a hiding spot. During this, McCoy calls Kane, revealing his true identity as an undercover DEA agent who has been working alongside Eddie for five years to get access to the coveted briefcase. The car accident was an unforeseen event that drastically altered their planned timeline. After ending the call, McCoy instructs his team to locate Kane promptly and evacuate him from the hospital. In the meantime, Anna fetches bandages and tends to her husband's injuries. In the midst of this, fragments of John's memory begin to flash back. He passively absorbs these recollections, one of which features a woman silhouetted against a sunset, possibly his alleged wife. Despite the precarious state of the operation, Kane maintains his suspicions and continues seeking an escape route, contending with Eddie's henchmen who roam the hospital halls intent on killing him. Breaking cover, Kane and Anna stealthily navigate the hospital's ventilation system. A sudden ring from his phone draws the attention of Eddie and his crew. The henchmen initiate a barrage of gunfire towards the vent, which Eddie halts, emphasizing his need for Kane alive. While maneuvering through the ventilation, Kane unexpectedly crashes into a church housed within one of the hospital rooms. Confronted by Diego, one of Eddie's men, who accuses him of treachery for absconding with the money and the briefcase, Kane experiences a sudden memory recall of transferring $20 million to a bank account. He commandeers Diego's weapon, ordering him to summon Eddie. After ejecting Diego through a window, Kane uses his phone to arrange a rooftop meeting with Eddie. Eddie consents, directing his men to prepare to execute Kane on his signal. Eddie's right-hand man arranges for sniper positions on adjacent buildings. Simultaneously, the DEA's board of directors contemplates setting the hospital ablaze. In contrast, McCoy pleads for more time, eager to extract Kane from the precarious situation. The board members grant McCoy a six-hour window to rescue Kane. Concurrently, Eddie and Kane convene on the roof, attempting to negotiate a resolution. Kane confesses to having killed Diego, a close friend of Eddie's, which greatly upsets Eddie. Eddie implores Kane to recall the suitcase's location, citing their collective predicament. As Kane nears recollection, Eddie unintentionally signals his men to open fire, causing the pair to take cover. Eddie laments the unfortunate turn of events, recalling a time when he defended Kane against other cartel bosses who desired his death. However, Kane does not wait around, opting to leap from the roof. Determined to escape the Mexican hospital, Kane contacts McCoy, who strives to formulate an extraction plan. Astutely, McCoy hints at the suitcase's potential whereabouts. Given that Kane cannot remember his pre-hospital life, he assumes the case is inaccessible and focuses on neutralizing Eddie. McCoy vows to do his utmost to save Kane, 
but also alerts him to the DEA's plan to torch and demolish the entire hospital. McCoy recommends that Kane head towards the east entrance, which faces the dawn, for his escape. Kane initiates his escape plan, bringing Anna along. In the meantime, the hospital staff attempt to flee, but are swiftly apprehended as hostages by Eddie's men. One of the henchmen who goes in search of Kane is brutally dispatched by Anna. Eddie then employs a microphone in an effort to coax Kane towards him, threatening the hostages' lives. In a moment of reflection, the woman, who turns out to be a CIA agent, approaches Kane, insisting that they must collaborate. This revelation provokes him, leading him to arm himself with a rifle and order her to remain stationary while he confronts Eddie for the final time. Concerned about a nurse's safety, he communicates with Eddie via radio, proposing a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Eddie decrees that all hostages will be executed if he doesn't return within 10 minutes. In the ensuing showdown between Eddie and Kane, their mutual intent is clear, to kill the other. Amidst this, the doctor heroically rescues the hostages by incapacitating one of Eddie's men with poison. Just as Eddie is about to deliver a fatal blow to Kane, a volley of gunfire brings Eddie down. It's Kane's wife, holding the elusive case. In this moment, Kane recognizes the woman in his visions, his wife. She gently assists him to his feet, they share a tender moment and a kiss. Together, they manage to escape the hospital, and McCoy meets them in a getaway car. Upon identifying the contents of the suitcase, Kane remains dubious of McCoy's true motivations. When McCoy assures him that the sensitive intel within the suitcase will remain undisclosed, Kane grows protective over it. Suddenly, he feels a sense of betrayal as Anna, his wife, points a gun at him, and the driver makes a forceful attempt to seize the suitcase. In an admission of duplicity, McCoy confesses he's a double agent. In an instant, guns are drawn, and a tangible sense of confusion pervades the air. Moments later, Anna eliminates the two DEA agents in the rear seats, followed by the driver, sparing only McCoy and Kane. It becomes clear that Anna has always been solely on Kane's side. Reacting swiftly, Kane shoots McCoy, leaving him in the vehicle to meet his demise. Kane and Anna abscond with the suitcase, a compendium of names, faces, and institutions implicated in international organized crime. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.